Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for visiting DiscountLowVoltage.com and today we're going to take a look at the CT-06 Cleaver. Let's check it out. Okay, so we'll start off at taking a good look at the fiber holder. As you can tell, let me see if I can... Uh, it has the... you got your numbers there to go ahead and measure your proper cleave length. And this is the AD10. You'll notice the part number right there, AD10. That is the model of this fiber holder, and it's for the 250 and 900 size fiber. So pretty much your tight buffered and loose tube. Okay, now on the back of the CT-06, there's the, the lock there that pretty much keeps it down in place. You want to go ahead and unlock that, and that'll flip it up. Now the CT-06 does include a fiber scrap collector. Okay, now that's there's a look at it right now. Now the manufacturer recommends that the fiber that you leave uh, should be between the roller and these two marks right there. Okay, they they consider this the fiber range that they uh, you know pretty much prefer for you to leave in order for the roller to work properly and to put that piece of glass in place. So once it's shut down, after you make your cleave, you're going to want to go ahead and turn that right there and that pretty much pushes it into storage. Okay, now this is your fiber blade base right here, okay? Now you'll notice there's the blade right there. Now, before you cleave, you're going to have to push this into place. There we go, it's locked down. And then basically when you're ready to cleave, you're going to want to go ahead and push it down properly. And the blade itself is going to swing back this way and do its thing. I'll give you an example. There it is. Now, let me show you how to rotate the blade. Okay, in order to rotate the blade, we're going to have to remove the fiber scrap collector. There we go. Okay, so now that the fiber scrap collector is removed, there's basically two notches. Well, there's two holes here, but on the fiber scrap collector itself, you'll notice that there is, there's one right there that pretty much just stays uh, in place. This is where the screw's at on the other side, but the, the hole, this particular one right here, inside of there, let me see if I can get some light in there for you, if we can take a good look. Now, you have to have, in order to have it proper, let me change the lens focal length here. There we go. In order to be able to reach that screw internally, you have to have this, you have to have your base pressed in in order for the screw to, there's a screw in there we got to loosen in order for it to align properly. So let me do that and then let me see if I can, if we can get a shot in here, if we could see it in there. There we go. You see that? So we're going to use the Allen wrench that's included, and we're going to loosen that, so that way we can rotate the blade. Now the manufacturer recommends, of course, like anything else, do not over tighten it because you will damage it. Okay, that's probably good enough. Now, let's get a good look at that blade. Okay, now if I remember correctly, this cleaver, the blade itself is good for 48,000 cleaves. So you're pretty much, you know, from time to time, you're going to have to rotate the blade every once in a while. So now that it's moved, um, now that the screw is loosened, we're going to move it from position one to number two. And then once that gets dull, we're going to move it to number three. And a lot of times, a lot of guys out in the field will use a, uh, you know, definitely some swabs, 
uh, maybe the wipes that are included with the kit and so that way you can properly you, you pretty much want to be careful with the blade this can get damaged so just uh, use something that's soft and it doesn't take much pressure to move it once you have the screw loosened properly so now that you move it to position two you want to go ahead and retighten the screw and keep using your cleaver until it gets dull once it gets dull go ahead and redo the position uh, loosen the screw and then move the position to number three and then the number four and so on, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Now let's go ahead and check out how to rotate, uh, well not how to rotate, but after you go around it once, you're gonna have to adjust the blade up just a little bit. Let's check that out. Okay, so on the other side of the CTO 6 cleaver, right above the fiber holder with the Allen wrench included with the kit once again, there's another screw right here that you're gonna have to go ahead and free up there, loosen it up a little bit. And then once that happens, now you'll notice that there is a small, it's really hard to tell, there's a small little indent right there. The manufacturer recommends that once that side nut is loose, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put the Allen wrench that's included, put it back in there and turn it. Make sure that indents to the next appropriate line and that will allow the the blade itself to be raised just a little bit in order for you to get the most life out of your blade once you do that go ahead and tighten the nut on the side and you're back in action okay so that's pretty much a nice overview of the CT06 these are made in Japan so make sure you buy from an authorized AFL distributor. There are counterfeits out there. And, you know, this is actually a really good cleaver for single and multi-mode. It uh, very, feels very durable. It doesn't feel as heavy-duty as the CT30, but it still feels uh, great. I think for the, for the price, it's probably... Um, it's probably great value for the dollar. It's a really good quality middle of the road cleaver that I've seen out there. So uh, for a more detailed spec sheet and to order online, visit discountlowvoltage.com.